Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin with the video. We're going to be talking about DirectX 12 because a lot of stuff has been emerging over the past few days that basically shows that the first wave of DirectX 12 only titles or titles which are really heavily pushing DX12 are starting to pop out and we should see by the end of the year them being on retail shelves or at least in this case Steam shelves at the very uh, least. So getting into things first of all with Hitman. Now AMD are pretty boastful regarding asynchronous compute engines in DX12. In fact, AMD released a press release going into a lot of details regarding this. Now, do you remember that just a few weeks ago, there was actually a GDC 2016 session which was announced citing Hitman's usage of DirectX 12, but obviously that wasn't really an official confirmation, but let's face it, if there's a presentation which says we're going to be talking about DirectX 12, it's not an official confirmation, but you'd be pretty amazed if they start talking about hot dogs during the presentation, let's be honest. But I'm going to read out some of the uh, quote. It's pretty lengthy, but I figure it's pretty pertinent. AMD are once again partnering with IO Interactive to bring incredible Hitman gaming experience to the PC. As the newest member of the AMD Gaming's Evolved uh, program, Hitman will feature top flight effects and performance optimization for PC gamers. Hitman will leverage unique DX12 hardware found only in AMD Radeon uh, GPUs called Asynchronous Compute Engines. Slight narration slash aside, we have talked about what they already are on the channel. If you want to search for Asynchronous Compute Engines, it'll pop right up. I actually had some quotes from Robert Halleck over at AMD where we did go into some painstaking details on how that works however I will cover it at the end of this quote once again if in brief just to get everyone onto the same page going back into the quote to handle heavier workloads and better image quality without compromising performance PC gamers have heard of asynchronous compute already but Hitman demonstrates the best implementation of this exciting technology yet by unlocking the performance in GPUs and processors that couldn't be touched with DirectX 12 games gamers can now get a new performance out of the hardware that they already own I'm gonna skip a couple of paragraphs because essentially they're just bolstering their own thing like you know widescreen support and high resolution and all that crap and then this partnership is a journey of three years in the making. I felt that was quite important to emphasize. Um, that was my opinion, not theirs. Which started with Hitman Absolution 2012, which is a bestseller in Europe and widely critically acclaimed. PC technical reviews lauded the knobs and dials that pushed GPUs to the limit at the time. That was no accident, with unstaffed game developers, source code and effects, the AMD Gaming Evolved program helps developers bring the best out of a GPU. Now in 2016, Hitman gets the same PC-focused treatment with AMD and IO Interactive to ensure the series' newest title represents another great showcase for PC gaming. Now, jumping to another big announcement, well, continuing a big announcement, Amy slash Amata on the channel already covered this earlier. We know, of course, that Quantum Break is coming to the PC. I'm not going to go through all of the specifications of it, but essentially it's going to be DX12 only. And indeed, for the recommended, in other words, to play at the bleeding edge, you're going to require quite a beastly system, something along the lines of a GTX 980 Ti, which obviously is kind of high-end it's not like a low-end system but it will of course be a DirectX 12 only game now a lot of people are citing well that's that's a lot of performance that's a lot of hardware however I feel that now is a really good time to bring up the fact that we're not just gonna get DX 12 games which are essentially the same in terms of aesthetic compared to DX11. It's not. And there's been a history from other DX versions. If you were to look in the past of, let's say, DX9 over 8 or DX10 over 9 and so on. Generally, obviously, there are exceptions based upon the game and the developer and all of that. But Typically, if you enable a higher DirectX version, sometimes you may get a performance benefit if you're running at equal settings. So for the sake of argument, let's just say that you have a settings all across the board which are 
let's just say medium but let's say with the equivalent of putting it to dx10 from dx9 you would be able to unlock a couple of settings that say for the sake of argument lighting and you would be able to crank those settings up and therefore you would be able to push them to let's say high or very high where they would not be achievable they would not be available they would not be accessible i just said three words which pretty much mean the same thing um with, the, with an earlier DX version. So in other words, it requires more performance, more hardware performance to be able to run that, which is kind of where we are now. Uh, DirectX 12, there is a lot of focus, of course, on the shiny stuff that we all know and love. We all know, you know, about the multi-threading performance enhancements, and we've, we've heard about, you know, all of these other cool things, which, you know, definitely will benefit the, I guess you could say, the efficiency of the hardware. But, DirectX 12 is also going to bring other things which are going to improve the aesthetic of the game. They're going to bring new lighting techniques. It's going to bring, essentially, the game is going to look better. And because of that, I'm not really surprised that to be able to run these games at the highest possible settings, you're going to require quite a beastly rig. Now, do bear in mind that some people are going to be a little disappointed by this, but to be honest, we have been at this point with gaming for some time. It's like, to be honest with you, for the past three years or so, you've not really had much of an incentive to upgrade your GPU, especially if you're playing at more modest resolutions and you don't mind the frame rate slightly dipping below the 60 FPS Nirvana. Let's face it, if you you know own like a 144 hertz display or faster, certainly you're going to need something a bit beastly, particularly if you're playing at least a minimum of 1440p or 4k but if you're happy to go a little bit lower in the resolution and you happen to have been one of those people who purchased let's say a 7970 back in the day i've got to say you probably were pretty damn happy this is a bit like when the 8800 gtx's came out way back when now in regards and i do realize i kind of skipped past this with asynchronous compute engines essentially with this way that the GCN architecture works. GCN is obviously exclusive to Radeon. It's basically the architecture which is created, which AMD created. It basically allows the scheduling. Asynchronous compute engines essentially are, you can just think of them as schedulers. They interleave the um, graphics workload with, let's say, compute workload. So for the sake of argument, let's say for the compute workload might be let's say, oh, I don't know, hair, or it could be artificial intelligence, it can be anything. Well, typically, as a GPU is processing data, not all shaders will be utilized equally. This is just how parallelism works, and it could be that the GPU is wait waiting for something for the CPU threads to be doing, it could be that there was just a random frame of animation that didn't require so much workload in terms of graphics, for example, let's say you're facing towards a fairly benign wall and therefore you can't really see past that. It could be a dozen other things. Therefore, during that time, the GPU can start doing other things. It can start processing, once again, artificial intelligence or physics. And do remember that hundreds of these instructions, thousands of these instructions are being issued per second. So it's not like, you know, one second the CPU is thinking of X and the next second it's thinking of Y. All of the shaders are handling different things so a, sh a shader A could be handling physics in one frame and it could be handling graphics the next frame. It's quite quick and um, it's just kind of how the technology goes. I've vastly simplified it for this video. If you do want a lot more information once again you can go ahead and check out the video and article that we've put out on Red Gaming Tech, so just search for Asynchronous Shaders DX12 and it should pop up. Now, I actually am quite happy with this. I am. I think that it's going to be really cool. Now, do remember the Hitman um, will have a beta soon on both the PlayStation 4 and PC, and we know that, of course, there are going to be only a couple of missions which are going to be available. The actual release date is March 11th, that's for the full game as far as I'm aware and even DirectX 12 support is going to come to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider looks amazing on the Xbox One. It's without question it looks really damn impressive. However 
I've just actually, you guys are probably not going to see this until like tomorrow or the day after, however I have just completed Rise of the Tomb Raider on the Xbox One, and I've also been doing graphics comparisons of the PC. Funny story, I'd actually finished the PC initial graphics comparisons, and then they essentially released a patch which increased the graphics options more on the PC version, and therefore I didn't feel right releasing my analysis, because it was like, okay, I'm going to be putting out an analysis but without the extra graphics options that have just been released therefore it would be disingenuous for me to do that it's not a fair comparison therefore I basically had to delete the footage and have to capture it again now we know the DX12 support is going to be coming for Tomb Raider as I mentioned however even now going from the Xbox going from the PC version excuse me to the Xbox one it's quite obvious the difference is aesthetically and I'm not just talking about the frame rate and the input latency and that which I have mentioned before but I'm actually referring instead to things such as the subtle details of Lara's hair and the backgrounds and this is not a PC versus Xbox One or anything like that you've got to remember I do feel that Xbox One pushed out a lot of stuff I mean considering the hardware it's running on the developers did an incredible job but it's not really a wonder to me that running the game at 1080p or 1440p or which are kind of low resolutions for the PC. It's like 1080p is fairly impressive for a console but for a PC it's standard. It's like we've had 1080p for some time and 1440p is pretty pretty normal now as well. I mean some folks might even decide to do if they've got a really extravagant graphics card setup they might go ahead and do like downsampling even from like a really high resolution like from 5k to 4k or something like that. Uh, obviously they would once again require something really meaty to be able to do that. So I think just to kind of put people's fears at rest I'm not surprised we are starting to see the emergence of specifications which are saying, yeah, you're going to need something like a GTX 980, or you're going to need something like a 390, or a 390X, or a Fury, or something like that. Just because if you run a, if you want to run all of those, all of those effects at 60 FPS, at high resolution with everything at max, it's intensive to do it. It really is, and. I say that, however, without being able to look. I'm not in, um, for example, I don't work at EDIOS. So I don't work, um, you know, at Square or these companies. And I can't see, essentially, I cannot see what the GPU usage is. I mean, I can, if I was to load up like MSI Afterburner, you could see what the percentage of GPU usage is, but you can't see it relative, so you can't see the workload that different jobs on the GPU are performing, unfortunately, at this point. So we have to just kind of guess that, yeah, um, it's probably to do with the fact that there's just a lot of workload there, and I'm not surprised. Does it mean that you're in a bad position if you're a PC gamer. Honestly, if you've got a fairly modest system for the next couple of months, for the next year or so, it could kind of suck if you're hoping to play DirectX 12 games at 1440p with all of the settings, all of the bells and whistles at the highest. Yeah, you're probably going to have a slightly bad time. However, I would counter that by saying that's now, but the next iteration of graphics card, for example, with Polaris and um, NVIDIA's next, and especially when we get eventually to Volta range of cards, which is probably going to be 2017-18, this stuff is going to be pretty benign. So we're just going through a slight, okay, the specifications are going up a little bit phase. And we've had those multiple times in the industry before, and PC has kind of gotten away with it in the past, but that's just my opinion. Anyway wasn't 100% what I was going for with this video. It's turned out a bit longer than what I'd anticipated. But, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I mean, as I mentioned, there's an awful lot of technology coming out this year. Um, we've got, of course, Zen. We've got Polaris. We've, I mean, that's just from AMD. We're starting to see DDR4 now as, like, standard which is really good, GDDR5X, which of course is kind of the intermediary step between 
uh, GDDR5 and HBM with rather impressive data rates. Even the early samples are hitting around 13, 14 uh, GBPS, and that's of course per chip which is pretty darn impressive. It means that we're going to start seeing extraordinary memory bandwidth for just a few, um, well, I was going to say a few uh, bus whips, but that doesn't make any sense. With just like 256-bit bus, we're going to see quite a lot of memory bandwidth. It's going to be actually higher than, let's say, 384-bit with a typical GDDR5 card. And just overall, there's going to be a lot of shiny stuff com coming out. So hopefully you will stay with me and enjoy it. But for that now, I'm going to leave you all to it. Take care. Bye for now.